Hey, how's it going? And today I'm going to show you how to use a blend space to combine two animations. Mostly if you look on the YouTube or go searching for this, you'll just see the the idle run or idle walk run combined to the blend space. You don't really see much else, but that's no reason why two other animations can't be combined. So what I'm trying to do is create a animation that I'm going to film. So I want to combine an idle with a kneeling so this is kind of what it would look like. So as my character is floating and then he kneels. So there's some slight adjustments I need to make. I need to lower the character to the ground. But basically this is a blend space combining an idle with a kneeling. And then that's what I would be filming. So I'll just show you how to get started with. And this is kind of, in a sense, kind of experimental because there's not a lot of tutorials around about how to do something exactly like this. So there's some innovations in it. It's a little different. So anyway, I hope you find it helpful. Okay, so to get started with this, I'm just going to go into the third person template and we're just going to call it my project 12 and we'll go create. And I've been doing a lot of tutorials or quite a few on using robot 12 so if you're going to be filming a movie or creating your own movie i would encourage you to go into the marketplace and get a robot or creature other than of course the you know the standard mannequins that come in unreal engine so that's why i'm using robot 12 so much i think it's fairly reasonably priced so anyway it's on the marketplace so and i have some tutorials about how to use that and i'm using that i've I've done other tutorials now about how I've taken Mixamo animations and converted them into UE for FBX files so that I can just import a, basically a wide range of animations. So I'll show you how we're going to get started on this. So the first thing I got to do is configure this Robot 12. So that's really easy to do. I'm just going to go into Blueprints here, come in here to the third person player character. And I'm just going to copy all of this stuff there and just go control C. And now in my robot 12 folder, I come here. Oh, I, I've got to add him. So here's the robot 12 is right here. So I'm going to add it to my project, which is project 12 right there and add to project. It just takes a minute to to load it up. I got a little bit ahead of myself there. So now you'll see I've got this robot 12. Now in here there's two two blueprints. There's this one here and this one I realized this particular BP robot is for bringing in additional as many of them as you want. So these can be individually customized. But we're just going to come in here into the event graph and you'll see if we get all these errors because it's not compatible. We're just gonna we're just gonna select all those and delete them, and then we'll hit Control V and copy in our third person player character. Now there's one more in here under Robot 12 under the demo, under the third person, I know third person blueprint here, and this third person character. This is the one that if we enable the third person character game mode over here this will cause our robot 12 character to be our main player character and that's that's what we want to do because we don't want to use the unreal mannequins for our story so anyway i'm going to just double click in this real fast and uh this is just kind of interesting like there's no manuals on how to do this stuff you literally just have to figure it all out on your own so we're going to delete that and go control v and now we compile and save now if we switch our game mode now if I come here and switch to third person game mode and hit play, here's our third person robot. And we got this cool robot with a customizable face and all this stuff. So this is really great. So now this is my character for our film. Now I want to create a custom animation for this particular player character. And there's a couple ways you can do it. One, we could get a level sequence. Let me not get too far ahead of myself. First, let's get the, what animations are we talking about? Well, Let's do it this way. Let's go ahead and import the one animation. So I'm going to come up here. Let me just try to stay in the same. I'll stay up here on the main content folder. And I'm just going to go add, import to game. And I've created a library of animations. And these are all, I did a tutorial about this, about taking a Mixamo character, converting them over to uh, UE4 rig, 
and then exporting those FBX files. So these are all the these are all originally started as Mixamo animations, but have now been converted to a UF, UE4, I guess motion capture data or and it, motion data, let's just say. And now it's but it doesn't have a rig associated, so it's just the mo, it's just the the animation data, but not the rig. So when I go to import this, I'll need to connect it to a rig. So the one I want is kneeling down. So I'll go open and see how there's no skeleton attached. But because it's based on a UE4 skeleton, I can just connect it up right here, the UE4 mannequin, and go import all. And you see how it comes in with no errors, see? Just like that. And if I drag it in, it's going to be the UE4 character. And if I hit play, he's over there kneeling down, right? Which is, which is fine. So, so now here's the... So I'm going to go ahead and delete him out of the scene. So I've got my animation. So let's see if we can, how we can make this work that I can get one of these characters, get my robot 12 to do an idol and go to kneeling. So to start this, let me go back on the content level here and let's just go ahead and create a, a blend space. So we come to animation and we go to blend space. And it's going to want me to pick a rig, so I'll just go ahead and make the UE4 mannequin. And I'll just call this my, um, well, I'll just call it BS Blend Space Neo Kneeling. And then let's just double click into it. And this is all very intimidating at first. Here it is right here. And I should have access to any UE4, here's the kneeling down, and I have an idol here, so I should have an idol right here, a third person idol. So it kind of gives you over here in the asset browser what animations are available to us. So I can grab this third person idol. It's kind of weird because sometimes you'll select it and it'll jump to another one. But we just drag it over here and put it on this timeline like that, and you'll see it's an idol. And then I can select the kneeling down and drag it right here. And now if I hit control and drag this little green X, you can see there's kind of our whole animation. And it does a real nice job of blending these two totally separate animations into one animation now. So now I've got an idol. Now what's interesting about this is this is fed, let me go ahead and stop this, by two input values. So we can have two values feeding this and this is where it was kind of stumping me was well what values can i feed into this thing i mean because it's on a scale from zero to a hundred normally this is driven off of the character movement because you'll see it go from idle walk to run but i'm not going to be driving this off of movement i really literally just need to input a value from zero to a hundred and so what i realized is we could use a timeline for that so let's see if we can make this happen. The other drawback about the blend space, and so here, if we come over here on the left side, it looks like we have a function name, and then we have horizontal access, and I can just give this a name so I can, if I don't give it a name, it's just gonna say nothing. It's gonna say none. And so you see now how it says value. And I'm just gonna leave all these on the default, and that's, that's all we're gonna do. We're just gonna save this. And that. So we just brought in our two animations. They're blended. They look great. And I'm just assigning a name here, value, that goes from 0 to 100. So if I can create a, an input parameter that goes from 0 to 100, I can have my animation play and be blended very nicely. So let's, let's see if we can pull this off. The thing, off, the thing is, is that this blend space is also going to need, it's also going to need a animation blueprint to work. So we're going to have to do that. So let's right click and go to animation blueprint right here. And again, we'll tie it to our UE4 rig because that's the one our robot has. And I'm just going to call this animation blueprint Neo in. And we're just going to double click into it. And it's going to just want something plugged into it. So I should have my blend space over here kneeling. I'll just drag it here and drag, connect it up like that. And you see there's the value. And this is, this is basically the, the Y axis and this is the X axis. 
So now I just need a value to input into here. And that's really the that's really the whole thing, right? So where am I going to get a value to pop into this thing? Well, let's see how we can do this. So it's all, it looks like it's working fine. So let's, let's do this. If we come into the event graph here, we got this going on up here. Okay. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's see where we're at. If I hit play, I just have my regular character just there. Okay. So I'm, this character is running off of the, it's the robot 12. So we're going to come in here to the third person. It's under demo here. Third person blueprint here. Here is this character, the third person character. Okay. So what we're going to do here is on the, it has an event begin play. We're going to create a variable and I'm just going to call it value. And we'll go ahead and set that to a float. And it doesn't need to be instance editable. And then we're going to right click and we're going to go to add timeline. This thing is a lifesaver for so many different things. And we're going to double click into it and we can create an input value here. We're going to do a float track. Right click, add a key frame there. Set our time to zero. And you can decide how long do you want this character to take to go from idle to kneeling down. And so let's just say five seconds. So we'll leave it set at five seconds. And the value is going to be zero. So then we're going to add another keyframe here. And the time, we're going to set it to five seconds. And the value is going to be 100. And then if we click here and here, we can see the whole graph. And you see it goes from 0 to 100 over 5 seconds. And there is our input value for our blend space right now. So now all we have to do is get this value over to our animation blueprint. So that's uh, what we got to do. So, um, but we need to set this too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this on and go set value. And we're going to just drag this in here into play from start. And then we're going to put this into update. And then our track value goes in there. So now we have an input parameter for our blend space. And that's all we had to do. That didn't take very long. Okay, great. It's a lot of work just for one animation. But think if you had to do motion capture for this. This is actually be a lot faster. You probably get a better result just doing it this way, even though it might take 20 minutes to do this. But then you got it set up and you can just keep doing different animations. Okay, so now we're over here and we are going to right click and cast to our third person character. Cast to third person character right there. And I'm just going to get the player character because that should be our index 01 player character. So we'll just pop this into here and this into here. And now if I compile and save, I should have access to that variable. So I'm going to probably have to create it over here too. But let's see. So say get value. It's right there. And actually, now that I think about it, I could just get set value. So we go set value. And drag this here. Put this into here. Do I want to get, I want to get it. I don't want to set it. Sorry about that. So I think what I need to do is actually add a, va a variable here. And we'll call this value in value update and make this a float because we need to get this into our. So, yeah, so then what I can do is drag this and go set and then get the value from our third person from our timeline. So then this can go into here. And this goes into here like that. And go compile and save. 
And let me just save all while I'm here. Now the only thing I should have to do is go into my animation blueprint here. Let's see, anim graph. And we need to put this value into here where it says value. So let's drag and put that there, get value, and pop that in there. And as far as I know, this should then create the animation that we we need once we set this. So what's going to be weird about this is now all you have to do is tie this animation blueprint that we just built to our third person character. So if I come in here, go to mesh, and I can just switch it here from here to AP kneeling. So what's going to be weird about this is, like I said, this is, if I hit play, See our character kneeling now? And I have no, like I can move this character. <laughs> I can move it like this, right, of course, right? But I'm just wanting to film this animation, this combined animation. So I'd get my camera all set up and everything, and then you can see. Now it looks like I might need to bring the feet down a little bit here. So I should be able to go into the third person player character and maybe let's try negative 98 and see if that helps. Hit play again. Oh, see the feet are too far down. So maybe on the feet, negative 97. And we'll compile and save. So that uh, looks, well, no, it's maybe 96. Gosh, it's really, it just really needed to just come down a little bit. So let's just do negative 96, which is interesting. Hit play. Oh, the feet are still kind of sinking a little bit there. That's not too bad. I could also raise the floor on that. But anyway, you get the, hopefully you get the general idea of what we can do with the blend space using an animation blueprint and then feeding data into the blend space to get our animation out of it. So anyway, take care, have a great day, and I'll talk to you next time.